Welcome to Yokomo, an ETS online course on a competence-based development for youth workers. Welcome, I'm Neris, one of the online course uh, creator for uh, youth workers about competence development. I invited Gabi today to have conversation about experiences and insights of working with ETS competence model for youth workers. Gabi, please introduce briefly yourself and especially your experiences with using ETS competence model. Hello, Nerius. Uh, yes, my name is Gabi Steinprins. I'm from the Netherlands and I work as a trainer since uh, a long time. I'm part of the Dutch trainer pool and I'm also a trainer in the Salto training of trainers and I do all kind of European training courses on very different topics. Um, yeah, I, uh, I know the ETS competence model since 2014 when it was introduced uh, in uh, Bridges, that was the one for trainers, and then 2016, the one for youth workers. And I use them both in quite different ways. Yeah. All right. So our interest is to get from you a little bit more on how to use ETS competence model for self-assessment. So questions I will ask will be related to different aspects of doing self-assessment as a youth worker mm -hmm. uh, along uh, the competence model. So one of the questions which I picked up was related to the fact that very often people when doing self-assessment, they have a feeling that uh, they are unsure about uh, their competences. Sometimes they feel uh, not confident on uh, evaluating themselves and so on. So, uh, what would you suggest to people in terms of being kind to yourself when doing self-assessment? How do you treat your competences when doing self-assessment? Yeah, if, I, th I don't think it's too difficult, uh, uh, although it depends a bit on the day. Sometimes I'm more critical towards myself and sometimes I'm more kind to myself. Um, maybe both are, are needed. Um, well, for me, uh, when I, I work on self-assessment, I uh, never kind of aim to be perfect. I don't think, I don't believe in the fact that uh, any trainer could be or should be perfect. So I also don't try to compare myself to, to other trainers. I, I see wonderful aspects of certain trainers. And of course, sometimes you feel that you would like to have it. Uh, or be as good in that competence as other people, but um, in my self-assessment, I don't compare myself with others. So I'm I'm much more focusing on uh, within my own, my own self and within my limits. How can I uh, perform, or how can I develop a certain competence? Uh, sometimes, also when people doing uh, self-assessment, they kind of uh, uh, mention that it's good to have others uh, seeing myself, uh, that's already luxury. If you have someone around you being able to mirror your uh, behavior, your competence and so on. So what would you suggest for people to be confident when doing self-assessment? In a way, people say, oh, we need others to tell me how good I am in something. But self-assessment has its own value. Yes, so, so what I'm usually doing or what is helping me, I, I, I would say I'm not sure if it helps others, but what helps me is to, to really think back on certain situations, to analyze certain situations, uh, uh, make myself, so assess myself and then question myself, really? So uh, um, is it really true what I think or is it what I wish that would be or am I too hard on myself? So I always have a kind of, first impression of myself, a first analysis, and, um, and I, I always do a second analysis um, and checking on myself if it's true what I think. I, I discover is that often um, I put myself a bit better in the second analysis. So my, I'm a cri more critical in the first one, and then in the second, uh, rethinking, reflecting, uh, asking if it's true, and then, uh, or I think of other situations, um, but but often I I have a, a a bit more confidence in the in the, um, in the in the second one. 
And anyway, it's still still it's related to this not not wanting to be perfect. I want to be authentic me, and uh, I relate uh, all my self assessment to that. So I don't put too much pressure on myself on 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 aiming to things that I will never be able to do. Um, and that's fine, you know. Okay, good, good. Um, very often when people start doing self-assessment, when they get exposed to a complexity of a uh, youth worker competence model, uh, quite often people get scared of this. And uh, uh, how, how could you re recommend or give suggestions of people really to go beyond being scared of such complex uh, model? Yeah, yeah, this was something that happened, especially in the beginning, uh, when uh, when we introduced, for example, the, the competence model in, in our pool of trainers, uh, in the Dutch uh, uh, pool of trainers. And there was also a lot of resistance uh, because it was an Excel document with 120, you know, competence areas and, and, and uh, all these elements that uh, criteria uh, and indicators. And of course, if you take it in a big list, then it's, then it's huge. And you say, oh, do I have to have everything? And um, if you look at the ETS competence model more as, a, as an indication, more as a kind of mapping out uh, all the elements that belong to our work uh, as youth workers, or in my case, often also as trainer, then um, it's not a tick box. For me, it's not a, I need to, you know, score the highest points on each one, but it's more areas uh, or development areas or aspects of my work. Um, and I think nobody has to have them all good. So it's more for me analyzing kind of what is interesting for me at this moment to, to develop that helps. So to focus on a few. And one of the reasons uh, um, is uh, that I, I have developed this uh, for, for trainers, the competence uh, uh, cards. Um, and, you know, picking out one and then focusing on one and then also using some tool, um, uh, looking at the history, how I developed it, where it comes from, uh, maybe finding some answers why things are uh, uh, underdeveloped or uh, why, why are they are very developed to, un to have my own understanding of also the why's, not only, you know, measuring if it's, if I'm a one or a four or a whatever number I want to give to it, um, or if I can even put into words w why uh, or what is it that I'm good at or maybe not so good at or where I would like to develop, but also to, to see where it's coming from. So I often also look at uh, where did I start with this competence? Um, and, and, and then that also helps to give a confident feeling and, and, and also to see which path I already have done, not only what I need to do. Right. Uh, let's move on. And one of the questions I want to ask you, uh, when you do self-assessment or people do self-assessment, they come to certain results and outcomes of this process. So how, how, can, you use of, how can you use this, what you see after doing self-assessment? Well, um, well, I find it very difficult to, to put things into action and especially the things that, yeah, when I, I think, okay, I feel confident in this, in this area. Um, I don't really feel the need to, to specially focus or work on it. Uh, then I put it often aside uh, and I then more, I, I look at the few that, that, that I want to work on. And then I try to make a plan and, and to make a strategy to work with it. Uh, but actually on, the, on the, um, the things that I feel uh, I, I don't specifically want to uh, work on or that I don't need to spend a lot of time developing it, yeah, that often um, goes away. So um, it, is, it is quite difficult to, to stay still or to, to be in your mind with... Uh, um, kind of this this outcome of oh yes I'm, I'm i'm good at this or this i feel comfortable with um it's not often coming back it's it's more that it gives the confidence i would say than to really have a yeah i don't make celebrations i could you know <laughs> i could make a party out of a competence party but i don't actually do that 
Okay. So throughout the conversation, you uh, kept mentioning from your practices being a trainer and using uh, ETS competence model for trainers. And here we are on a course for uh, using ETS competence model for youth workers. Uh, how do yeah. you see these two models? Are they very different in terms of uh, helping people to do self-assessment? How is the difference between doing uh, self-assessment using trainer's competence model and youth worker's uh, competence model, if any, or maybe not? Yeah. Well, they are a bit different, but uh, in the essence, they are not so different. I think it's still uh, giving uh, opportunity and giving, um, how do you say it, kind of tool or kind of um, uh, yeah, support in, in making uh, your self-assessment and, ex and your de development. I feel b both models in that sense are the same. They are their support measures to, to, to help you to develop in, 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 in your profession. Um, then of course it, it, it is a bit different focus uh, where the, the competence model for youth workers seems to me a bit more practical uh, where it's not only an attitude, but also very much uh, uh, looking at the behavior and not all the competences are the same uh, and competence areas are the same. Um, so there, there is a bit of difference. Uh, and, and for me, what, what is different is that often as trainers um, or as trainer, I work in, um, uh, with new people. Yeah, I have only a few trainings where I work for a longer period with the same people. Um, so when I, when I, I, for trainers, I need more self-assessment, whereas with the youth worker competence model, um, I, I see the possibility where youth workers are working on a daily basis uh, uh, with the same target groups or similar target groups with often same colleagues. Um, uh, I think that this, uh, you can take much more in kind of the feedback and you can make longer term um, plans for, for that. Whereas for the trainers, sometimes I think, okay, I want to work on this. And then maybe trainings come that where it's not so relevant, that area. So that makes it a bit more difficult. And youth work in general, I would say for most people, seems more uh, continuous, more... Uh, yeah, constant. So I think you can you can use your self assessment also in a more constant way. All right. For the end of conversation, let's imagine someone is uh, on our course and willing to start with uh, self assessment of youth worker competences. What advice would you give to that person? Well, do, well, it depends mainly to find assessment tools that that work for you. I don't think there is one assessment. There is not one way. I, I cannot say this is the way to do it. I don't believe in that. But there are a lot of tools. There are a lot of ways to, to look at yourself. Um, so I think look, look, find tools that, that work for you. And even some of the, the, the tools that have been developed in the trainer, for trainer competencies can also be used at, for the youth worker competence. Um, so, so find your own way and take time. And what helps me is to, to, um, allocate time in my agenda for my self-assessment. So I once in a while have, for example, a morning in my agenda specifically blocked for self-assessment. And I think, uh, because otherwise it's something that, yeah, yeah, I will do in between. I will do in between. Often my self-assessment is, is kind of, um, is, is, is the collection of moments uh, in between training moments when I, in the breaks, you know, or, or in the evening where I write down, oh, uh, I, I, I thought of this or I work on this. But uh, yeah, it's really helping if, if, I, uh, if I'm more, uh, if I have this uh, allocated time. Um, so that is one of the things that, that really helps me to, to spend three and a half hours or a day with myself. To, to really take time for that. It needs time and I think it's worth the investment. And then sometimes I also go to trainings or to, to places where I'm a bit triggered. So like for me, the comments, uh, places where I'm triggered to, to, to think with peers uh, and, and, and that bring all kinds of new questions. And often after that, I take also time to, to sit and to 
really spend time with my self-reflection on, on the issues that came up. Thank you, Gabi, for today's conversation. It's really interesting to listen to your experiences, insights, and advices. And I hope this will be helpful for people who are into self-assessment of their competences. Yeah, it's worth it. We hope this video contributed to you learning about the competence-based development for youth workers. 